So I finally managed to get hold of the Sony AKA LU1. This is the handy cam style attachment for the Sony action cameras, the AS10 or the AS15. Inside the box, you just get the instructions, a guarantee, and the AKA LU1 itself. So let's just have a look at it in more detail. Well, there's the model number on the side there. If we turn it around, you can see it really is just a shell for the action cameras. And it's pretty unsophisticated, really. I'll tell you what I mean in a moment. The usual buttons are on the back here that are on the back of the normal action camera, but on the bottom, you've got a tripod hole. That's something that's very useful and wasn't on the action camera itself. Now, if we lift this cover here, of course, that's where the action camera goes inside. And if you look in the bottom, that's the interface between the action camera and the shell. It's just that one thing there. Now look at this. When I press the button, you'll see this little bit of plastic pops out here. That's what I mean by unsophisticated. It's actually mechanical. And the whole button just holds that button at the back from being pressed. Now on this side, there's three buttons along the bottom there. Skip back, play and skip forward. We'll just open the screen up. It's a very nice screen. It's a 2.7 inch screen, 960 by 240 resolution with a 169 ratio. And as you can see, it can be rotated 270 degrees and face back towards the front like that and fold back against the body so that you can use it for reviewing footage you've recorded earlier. So let's put the camera inside it. Here's how you do that. You open the flap on the bottom of the action camera, open the flap on the side of the case, and then you've got to sort of slide it in while keeping the flap open so that the interface will attach at the bottom. And that's it. It looks a bit off center, but when you click this cover down, it holds it all in place nice and firm. Now we'll just open it up and switch it on. Now to switch it on, you have to press one of these buttons on the side here or the record button and then it will start up just like a normal camcorder you can see what's on the screen before you start recording and use it to frame the footage accurately and as mentioned it does rotate now if we fold it back on itself and press the play button in the middle it'll go into the playback mode and you can skip back and forth between the things that you've recorded earlier on using the left and right buttons. You can't fast forward or rewind or any of that business. You can just play a clip and jump back and forth between the different clips you've recorded. Now, all the information is still on this LCD screen on this side. There's no on-screen graphics at all, no information whatsoever. All it is is a screen that plays back the footage. Now, as you can see here, I can click through things quite easily and, and watch them back after I've recorded them, which is very useful when you're out and about. You can do that, of course, with Wi-Fi on the AS15, but it's a lot simpler and quicker to do it on this. Now, if you imagine this is me filming it, I'll just fold the screen out to show you what I was looking at while I was recording this. So I was holding it in my hand like that and walking forward, and you can keep things very accurately framed on that screen. And you can see it outside. It's nice and bright as well. Now, to get out of playback mode, Strangely enough, you have to press the record button and that stops the playback, makes the screen go blank. And then you have to use the buttons on this side to get back into record mode. It's a little bit fiddly that. Now we're in record mode again, we're in movie mode. So we press record on the back here. So it's recording now. Again, nothing on the screen to tell you it's recording. No red dots or timers or any of that business. No on-screen displays at all. It's still all on this side of the camera. And that's a little bit less sophisticated than I thought it would be. I thought that interface would mean that it would put displays on the screen, but of course it doesn't do that. And when I'm in the setup menus on this side, you'll see I can go through all the usual setup menus, but on this side, the screen is just blank because it's neither in playback or record mode. Now I'll show you how I got on out and about in Manchester. Right, well the first thing to mention is that you can't operate the camera single-handedly. If you hold it like this, you'll see I can't get my thumb to the on-off button very easily without actually dropping it. And of course it doesn't have the usual strap that a camcorder would have on this side. So you need to operate it two-handedly like this. But once you've got it switched on, you'll see that you can put the camera in the kind of traditional camcorder position and frame things quite accurately. Or you can put it further down, which is how I like to film, so I can get a nice low down shot like this. And of course, this is how a skateboarder would sort of film things. And of course, if you flip the screen around 180 degrees, you can film yourself quite accurately while still keeping important things in frame in the background. Now, I'm not for a minute suggesting that this is a complete replacement for a camcorder. I think it's something that can be used in addition to a camcorder under certain situations. I mean, the fisheye effect that you can see here 
is rather distracting at times and you certainly wouldn't want your entire holiday video to have this strange effect but there are conditions that you come across where using a camera with a very wide angle lens and a screen so you can frame things accurately means that you can get some really interesting shots that you wouldn't be able to get with a traditional camcorder. And under the right conditions, this camera can take some really good quality video. The kind of thing that you might want to cut into a longer video that you've taken with more traditional equipment. And the fact that it's got that screen on the side means that I can frame things perfectly. For example, look at this. The lamppost on the left just out of frame a little bit. So I took a step back and just got everything perfectly framed on that screen. And the screen is accurate to what's recorded on the memory card. Okay, so, so far so good, but I do have a couple of little niggles and then one very big one. The first thing, not very important this, the tripod hole is towards the rear of the camera rather than the middle, which might affect stability a bit. Now the next thing, the LED light on the camera to show it's recording is at the top here, it's red when the camera's recording. Now on the case, it's in the same position at the top right there, but it doesn't have an LED, it actually has a light tunnel to pull the light through from the LED on the camera to that hole on the back. And that means that it's rather dim. As you can see here, it's on at the moment, but you can barely see it. And when you're outside in the daylight, you really don't stand a chance. Now the speaker on this camera is just that hole there. It pulls the sound through from the action camera speaker itself, which is a little bit too tinny and quiet. Now there is one thing that's missing from this camera that is a major omission. See if you can spot what it is. You might have noticed already, in fact, if you know the camera, there should be something on the bottom here. I'll show you what it is. The Sony action cameras were clever enough to include a stereo mic in socket on the bottom there, it's that pink thing there. Now for some reason they didn't pull that through to the bottom of the case, I even thought about drilling a hole through myself, but then I saw that it wouldn't really work because there's a kind of weird brackets and screws and things, and I'd just definitely break it if I did that. Why Sony didn't put a port through there themselves, I've got no idea. I mean it does have microphones on the front which are fine, but omitting that socket is ludicrous. Okay, rant over. I'll give you some good news. I put the camera in front of this Nixie clock at 345 with the screen on, recording in 1080p with the stabilisation on. Left it recording, and the battery finally gave out at 615. So that's two and a half hours worth of power with the screen on, which is very good. And that's going to be very handy, because if you want to charge your camera up, you can't do it while it's in the case. Again, they haven't pulled through a USB port or anything like that. You have to take the camera out of the case to be able to access the USB ports on the bottom to charge it up. And similarly, if you want to get that memory card out or pull the data off it. So overall then, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, it doesn't do anything extra other than what it's set out to do. And that was to provide an LCD screen for the action camera for playback and recording. Of course, it has got an extra tripod hole in the bottom, that's appreciated. The fact they miss that microphone socket off when it's on the camera is very sad, but I'm afraid that's just how it is. I just have to live with it. But other than that, I do find this a very useful thing. I'm gonna be using it an awful lot to make some of my other videos with. So for the moment, thanks for watching.